Hello everyone, I'm in Santiago, Chile. And today I'm going to one of the most exotic destinations in the world that you can go to with the most advanced airplane in the world. And why am I wearing my space shuttle shirt? I will explain. Easter Island is best known for its giant stone statues called Moai. This small island, measuring only 63 square miles, is one of the most isolated islands in the world. Located in the Pacific Ocean and the territory of Chile, Easter Island is the easternmost point of Polynesia. Mataveri Airport on Easter Island currently sees just one flight daily, a LATAM Boeing 787 Dreamliner to and from Santiago, Chile. This airport's long 11,000-foot runway has a unique claim to fame. The island's location in the Pacific Ocean serves as an ideal transoceanic abort landing site, or TAU, for the space shuttle. At this point, you're probably thinking, wait, what? A space shuttle emergency landing airport in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? Why, yes, the space shuttle program was planned to be launched from both Kennedy Space Center in Florida and Vandenberg Air Force Base in Southern California. Launches from Vandenberg would head in a southerly direction to polar orbits. Easter Island was the first available landing location should the shuttle needed to make a transoceanic abort landing. In 1986, NASA paid $7.5 million to extend the runway at Mataveri Airport to the current 11,000 feet length and installed a microwave landing system and xenon lights enabling shuttle landings there. In that same year, tragedy struck NASA and the nation when Space Shuttle Challenger exploded 73 seconds after liftoff from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Space shuttles were grounded while a special presidential commission investigated the accident. The first Vandenberg shuttle launch was supposed to take place later that year, in 1986. The space shuttle returned to flight in 1988, but the same year, the Secretary of Air Force effectively canceled the Vandenberg space shuttles, citing a number of reasons, including not relying on a single launch vehicle, namely the Space Shuttle for military space programs. At Mataveri Airport, there's a plaque placed by NASA when the new runway opened there in 1987 in recognition of the work by the Director General of Civil Aeronautics that made the Space Shuttle emergency runway there possible. Even though no Space Shuttles had ever launched from Vandenberg, and indeed no shuttle had to ever perform a transoceanic abort landing, the legacy NASA left in Easter Island enabled wide-body aircraft, such as the Dreamliner, to operate there, thereby increasing tourism to the island. But it would be an interesting what-if if a space shuttle had landed at Easter Island. Arthur Lee Corey explored that question in a novel full of political implications amidst the Cold War, and what the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft will have to do to make the mission across the Pacific. Back to reality in Santiago in the present day. Let's fast forward our flight on the LATAM Dreamliner to Easter Island.
five and a quarter hours after departure, while descending through 13,000 feet, we had our first sighting of Easter Island. Seeing the solitary small island in the vast Pacific Ocean gave me an appreciation of how navigators, either air or ocean, ever found their way there. We approached Easter Island from the southeast. Mataveri Airport is very discernible as its 11,000 feet long runway runs the entire southern width of the island. Notable features visible is the crater at Ranokau, as well as the three islets on the southern tip, popularly known as Birdman Islands. Turning base approaching runway 10, we got our best view yet of Easter Island. Looking at the western side, we see the island's only town, Hungaroa. And now, turning final to runway 10. Touched down at Mataveri five hours and 30 minutes after departing Santiago. We taxied all the way to the end of the runway and back taxied on runway 28. Passing the airport's fire and rescue station and control tower along the way. Thank you for choosing to fly with a town. For your safety, please remain seated until the supply sign is turned off. When you open the red gate, please be careful and just put and turn your baggage as you must shift around during the flight. As you disembark, make sure you take all the personal items with you and please don't leave any reason to use the aircraft. You cannot use an electronic device. Remember that by being part of our Let's and Pass program, you can enjoy your walk with our frontiers, while you are miles, share the import trip, and expect better benefits. We invite you to place the next vacation from the gift to end at latam.com. Choosing your package, hotel, and car are home. Always a complete mind. We hope to see your board on your next flight. Thank you.
turning onto the ramp, there are two parking stands available. Though currently, only one scheduled flight per day comes through here. We deplaned using stairs from both the front and rear doors down to the open ramp. It was quite a relaxed affair with passengers went everywhere on the ramp as they headed to the terminal. Here we are, Easter Island, Rapa Nui. This scene reminded me of old photos of passengers boarding at airports from back in the day. Since we went through immigration checks upon departure, there were no checks on entry. The baggage claim was quite crowded as the airport arrival area was very small. To see my departure from Monteverde Airport, follow the link here as I lift off from this space shuttle capable airport in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm.